right, three, two, one. Hey guys, it's John and Katie hanging out with Clinton Hobart, who is a Disney fine artist. And we're talking about Wizard World Comic Con. You're going to be there showing off some of your pieces. I am. All right. And I, we talked about how art is a big part of Wizard World that not a lot of people would think. You know, that you think that you're going there's going to be a lot of cosplay, a lot of guest panels, but the art is one of the coolest things. How important do you think it is to have all of those artists at Comic Con to be able to show their stuff? Well, it's where it's where the industry got its start. I mean, you, you have a Deadpool movie, but somebody created Deadpool, and it was an artist and a writer. And so, you know, how can you have actors and actors without having the creators of the characters who are artists and writers? And so. It's vitally important, you know, even though, you know, we all know that the actors are going to bring in the crowds, it's still mm -hmm. important to have the creators and the writers at the show, I think. Absolutely. So being a Disney fine artist, it sounds like it's basically getting into Harvard, except a little bit harder. <laughs> Tell us about the process. Um, well, it's a, it's a submission process, just like anything else. They get... 10 to 20,000 submissions per year. They hire one or two people. In fact, I think in the last year and a half, they've only actually hired one person. So it's 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 pretty it's pretty tricky to get into. It's 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 tough, uh, and a lot of it is just persistence, hard work, and persistence. You know, they say, you know, hard work pays off, and in the squeaky wheel gets oil. Those are all true, um, and knowing somebody on the inside doesn't hurt. <laughs> Who were some of your influences getting started as a young artist? I like dead people, and uh, most of my uh, most of my favorites, actors, musicians, and artists are, are all dead people. Actually, um, okay. Norman Rockwell, J.C. Leindecker. I love turn of the century illustration, um, but actually, some of my biggest artistic influences have been actors. Uh, I love old movies, and so when you look at my stuff, I try to build sets that look like old movies. I try to create things that have an antique feel like old film or old antique stores. And um, and I think that, I, I don't really know where that came from. It's just, probably just general discontent, <laughs> you know? Well, your art has now made it possible for you to to combine with your other passion of actors and films and stuff like that, because you get to go to events like this and travel around with them. What is that like? It's, it's, it's fantastic. You know, um, you know, can I name names? Absolutely. All right, cool. Uh, you know, you know, selling a painting a couple months ago to Michael Rooker, you know, who's somebody who I've, I've, an actor I've loved for years. Um, not just loved, you know, seeing him in film, but his his presence at a con. You know, if he's doing a show, you know, a Wizard World especially, you go to see him. He changes the feeling of a room, and a lot of these actors, and, and you try to have that energy and that and that that life and that love for what we do. And if you can bring that to the show, then other people are going to feel that they're going to want to go to the show. What piece, just out of curiosity, did you sell to Michael Rooker? I sold a Dorito painting. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> what and, flavor? Uh, <laughs> original. You always start with original. But, but since he bought that, I've gotten, I've gotten requests for Fritos, uh, Funyuns I just did, uh, something called Cheese Nips, Ips, Nips, something. Cheese Nips. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's classic, man. That's a staple. Come on. You know, yeah, I try not to eat too much uh, junk food. but uh, And then Cool Ranch Doritos, which I, I hope Mr. Rooker's not offended by, but I had to do a sequel. That's awesome. He's doing a sequel right now. I did a sequel. Everybody's doing sequels. Well, being a Disney fine artist, do you have any Disney favorites, either pieces of yours or just films in general that you like? I've always been partial to Beauty and the Beast. I don't know. why. Maybe I just... I think I might be attracted to the idea of a beautiful woman seeing through the exterior into the the, the, the wonderful person beneath. I mean, talk about a fairy tale, mm -hmm. um, you know. And so, Beauty and the Beast has always really resonated with me. Um, Little Mermaid was the the animated film that that always um, threw me, caught me off guard. Um, all right, uh, Little Mermaid was always the film that you know when I was a kid, the, the animation on it was so fantastic that uh, you you just kept watching it over and over and over again. On the road with celebrities, craziest story. And yes, you can name names on this one too. <laughs> on the road with. Celebrities. Are there any crazy stories? I mean, you've sold some of your work to. I mean, not only Michael Rooker, but you you've sold to a lot of people and. I mean, I was doing my research online, and it said like CEOs and things like that. Uh, I mean, y yeah, you know. Um, there's a lot of celebrities that, I, that have purchased my work. A lot of them don't want to be named, which is why it's vague. Yes. Uh, generally, when I sell a piece to a celebrity, I'll say to them, hey, do you mind if I name it? And most of them um, uh, are, are older. Uh, there's a long time in art, actually, where, where now it's changing. Right now, we're starting to get young people that are interested in art. But for a long time, if you were to buy an original oil painting, that meant you were over 70. Mm -hmm. 
And, and thankfully now, people in their 30s and 40s and 50s are starting to, to buy art and be interested in art. Um, and so that's, that's what we're really trying to do, is get to young people and say, hey, there's more out there than just actors and singers and guitarists. There are people who have these skills, and you might want to look at some of them too. When people approach you at Comic-Con, what are some of the things that they want to talk to you about? You know, when you're a Disney artist, your fan base ranges from like 5 to 70. So the questions, you know, you get are everything from where'd you go to art school to if you could marry a Disney princess, which would you pick? Uh, which is just to dodge that question as, as quickly as humanly possible. Uh, but the that was next for John, I think. <laughs> That's what he was. Gonna I was going to give you my list, but I have answers. But if if there are kids watching, um, and, and so you know the the questions just really uh, run the gamut from from everything you would think of. Awesome. Well, where can people see your work? Well, o online and any, any Wizard World show, you know, www.clintonhobart.com. Um, you know, any Google search of me, I'll be I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, all the big ones, and so or or here at Wizard World. All right. Do you have any final words of encouragement as to why people should come out to Wizard World this weekend? Because it's fun. All right. All right. Good enough for us. Check out Clinton Hobart this weekend at Comic-Con. Thanks for being with right. us. Thanks a lot.